is the one, the only... Here I am again with a chance for each of our couple, uh, couples to win as much as $10,000 tonight. And, uh, George, what happens if they say the secret word? Well, they can win an extra $100. Yeah, that's true. Now, what is the word for tonight? Well, it's uh, right here in the duck. Uh -huh. All right, George, who's placed on the agenda? Well, before we start, Groucho, I want to remind you that we have a couple of challengers to the claim made last week by Mr. Universe of 1957 that he has the most perfect build in the world. We'll meet them a little later on in the show. Why don't you enter this contest, George? You're pretty well built. I mean, for a man. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm actually no muscle man. Uh, oh, don't be modest, George. You have more muscle in your head than they have in their whole body. <laughs> well, Groucho will meet our um, first couple right after we uh, transact some important business. Well, Groucho, we have a couple of youngsters from Europe who would like to meet you now. Susie Gall from Switzerland and Elfie Hummel from Austria. So, girls, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret, boys. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. Susie Gold and uh, Elfie Hummel. Huh? What do you? Huh? Is that right? Yes, yes. I'm Elfie. Oh, what are you girls dressed like that? Are you attending a Girl Scout convention here in L.A. or are you going to a masquerade? Oh no, we are not Girl Scouts. We are Boy Scouts. You're Boy Scouts, eh? Huh? How is it I never saw a Boy Scout that looked like you? Oh, perhaps you have never been in Switzerland and Austria. So you are a Boy Scouts in Europe? Yeah, I think you have no Girl Scouts. Our girls are not so interested in camping and all that stuff well, and campfire. Well, that's what you think, huh? <laughs> Now, why do they allow girls in the Boy Scouts in Europe? Oh, you? they make better, I think, wolf cub leaders. These little guys from 6 to 12, you can help them better. So it's better to be, a, as a girl, a wolf cub scout. How old are you, Susan? I'm 22. 22. And uh, Elfie? A little more past 22. 80? And not yet. Between 22 and 23. 23. Yeah. Well, that's the ideal age for Boy Scouts like you, especially for the Scoutmaster. <laughs> but Susie, what are you girls doing in Hollywood? You, you are girls, aren't you? We are girls, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing here? We are on a trip around the world. And you, you're traveling all over the world? Oh, yes, hitchhiking. Mm -hmm. We hitchhike. Uh, there's and a what? camel coming, or elephant. Camel is coming? Yeah, sometime. In elephant. You and the descent, yes. A uh, bullock cart, uh, a donkey cart, a donkey himself, uh, chief, uh, everything, any, anything, to melon trucks, trucks, or melon trucks, everything. We travel by everything. bullock, elephant, ox carts? Everything. everything. Yes, much is moving on. You it know, people will, will ride in anything as long as it's a foreign make. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it dangerous riding those wild animals? Oh, oh no. Not for us anymore. Much fun. No? Now, Elfie, what are some of the unusual countries you visited? Yeah, the most interesting was, I think Lapland was quite interesting. Europe. Lapland? Yes, we have some interesting Is countries too in Europe. Lapland, isn't that yeah. where all good secretaries go when they die? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we must have... We would have to be very good skiers, actually. <laughs> uh -oh. What's the most uh, interesting experience you've had in your varied travels? Oh, I think we have had plenty, but... Uh, yeah, but I, I think, think the yeah. most funny thing when we was when we met the caliph, uh, all the harem of the caliph of Tetuan. Yes, he has Spanish Morocco. You met what? You met what? The caliph of Tetuan. The harem. Caliph, you mean? Yes, yes the you call it perhaps caliph. caliph yes, huh? Now we call, call it madness. Now what do you call it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> he has 300 wives. He has 300 wives, and, huh? Yes, and because yes. he's harem, this was quite interesting. You saw his harem? How do they spend their time, these wives? They can't all cook dinner every night. Or do they get in frozen foods? <laughs> Oh, they have plenty of service. They mustn't do they it. They sit on, on, on silk cushions. All day? And fighting each other. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, I mean, painting a little bit and wailing and unwailing. That's all what they do. Well, <laughs> you'd wail too if you were one wife of 300. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do these wives to... know that the old boy hasn't got some other dame stashed away someplace? Oh, he has. He, he has. has about 300 or something like that he has. But on you the have outside? Heard, oh, yes, on the outside. outside. Yeah. Pretty good job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Imagine what it must be like when this Caleb comes home from the office unexpectedly and 300 guys are jumping out of windows. <laughs> you know, even in my wildest dreams, I never anticipated that I'd be holding this kind of a conversation with a couple of Boy Scouts. 
Well, you're as charming a pair of Boy Scouts as I've ever come across. And it's <laughs> certainly been fun talking to you. Now we're going to give you a chance to win a lot of money. Now, do you understand this game? Um, the yeah, idea is... that's our category and we have to pick out something. Yeah, that's yeah. right. The idea is to win five. If you win $500, you get a chance later at five or $10,000. <laughs> yes. You have uh, four chances. In other words, you can pick four questions from any rows you want. I see. 100, 200, 300. Now, uh, the 100 are fairly easy. The 200 are a little more difficult than the 300 are a little tougher than any yeah, of them. I uh, think so. You understand? Uh, well, we'd like what it means. Try to get a total of 500. <laughs> Here you are. There's a $200 yeah. question. Oh, oh, who will lie with the penny? Two hundred dollars. To what country does Greenland belong? Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, guess. Mm -hmm. but you Denmark. Know, Denmark. 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 Right. Now you've got two hundred dollars. You've got two hundred dollars. <laughs> All right. Now remember, you have three more chances, and you can pick any ones you want. Yeah, the object is to make $500 altogether. You've already All got right. 200 All right, All right, no, no, no. <laughs> It's terrible. Now listen, kid, keep quiet. Well, let me read it. <laughs> For $200, the Yalu River separates Korea and what other country? You ask her because she might know something, too. And China. No, what do the giant minds, the brain trust, have to say about this? No, it's South Korea. Yes, it's not, All right, no, then. Well, no, it's Manchuria, and that's part of Red China, so now you have $400. Right. One okay. more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have two more chances. How much have I you have two more. You have $400, two more chances to make $500. <laughs> Come on, boys. Another 200 it. You'll have 600 and you'll be in the... <laughs> Running for 10,000 at the end of the show if you get this one right. What is the mountain range separating France and Spain? Pyrenees. That's right. Now you now have $600. <laughs> you have one more. Uh, you're already, uh, you have 600. That's good. Believe me, that's good. Yeah. Uh, why should they believe you? <laughs> I was a Boy Scout once. Uh, <laughs> the FBI? <coughs> you can't lose now. In other words, you're, you're in, and oh, this is well. all gravy now. You're schwitzing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, very much. Very much. Yeah. For $200, uh, what country lies directly south of Denmark? Germany. 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 Right. Yes, that's and true. you wind up with a total of $800. I so we'll see you back here. We'll maybe do five or $10,000 at the end of the show. You hear that? And, and uh, listen, we, you come back yeah. later. And now Thank you get $800. You. Go down to the J.C. Penny and each buy yourself a skate for a buck and a quarter, will you? <laughs> <laughs> What's next, George? Well, last week, uh, Mr. Universe of uh, 1957... Mr. Universe? Yes, he was on our show last week. Is somebody by that name? Yes. Uh, his name is actually Reginald Lewis. Um, and his wife said that he had the most perfect figure in the whole world. And, uh, His you... Wife, well, she ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Groucho invited, uh, any men listening who figured that they had a better figure to, uh, get in touch with us and... and figure that out. And many of them did, and we selected two to be on our show tonight, and, uh, I think they're ready now, Groucho. Mm -hmm. Well, you may be wondering what we're doing with a stunt like this, but I'm sick of looking at beautiful girls. <laughs> well, that's true. And I thought for a change we ought to give the women a break by having some handsome men up here. Let's face it, we're all animals, deep down. <laughs> Everybody knows there are male wolves, so there certainly must be female wolves. Otherwise, there never would be any little tiny wolves. <laughs> and then where would we be then? Huh? <laughs> now, George, how are we going to decide who the winner is? Well, we thought it would uh, be a good idea if we maybe selected a woman from our audience to be a judge. All right. Well, let's get a woman out there. Is there a woman out there who'd like to be a judge of this contest? If, if so, stand up. Stand up? Any, any woman so at all. You? Any woman at all. Stand up. Oh, the one with the gray dress. Red dress. All right, red dress. Come on. the woman with the red jacket here, in case they go hunting. <laughs> How do you do? What is your name? Lillian Watkins. It is? Well, that's a mighty fine name. And uh, are you married? 
I'm uh, unmarried now. Okay, otherwise you were going back in the audience. You know. <laughs> Your name is Lillian Watkins? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, do you think you're qualified to pick the, uh, the man with the best build? Well, I certainly should be. I was married 30 years. To one man? The same one. Send the other woman back. <laughs> We want a woman's had four or five. Okay, I guess you're qualified. George, bring in the challenges. Eh? All right, uh, Mr. Don Scott, who was Mr. Physical Fitness of uh, 1956, and Joe Gould, the most perfect man of 1956. Would you gentlemen come in, please? Come on in, boys. Okay, boys, start flexing. And I have to now, you, you walk in front of them there, and you decide which one you uh, think would be the... I'll go with you, huh? <laughs> you want a tango? <laughs> which one do you... Hey, no touch! <laughs> you better go around, go around the back and take a look at them. Now, they may look better from the rear end. <laughs> oh, they're good ones. This one's a little, this is the veil You like this one? Okay, Blondie, I'm sorry, but uh, that's, that's the way the muscles bounce. We give you another chance. Come on over the microphone. Now, uh, what do they get, George, for displaying their shapes up here? Well, um, uh, for our uh, winner here. He's the uh, winner? Yes, Joe Gould. Gold. Yeah. He gets uh, $101. And um, for uh, Mr. Uh, Don Scott. We have uh, second prize money of $99. I see. Well, I thought, uh, well, I'll give them the $2 because I couldn't see much difference between them. Oh. Well, do you want to take one of these home with you? I'd like to. What is your name? Uh, Joe Gold. Are you married? No. Are you interested in uh, getting married to a girl who's been uh, married for 30 years? Well, I've this... been a bachelor this long. I figure I'll still stay a bachelor. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Some other time. Huh? Thanks for coming up. Uh, we have a prize for, uh... Oh, you got a prize for her, too? Yes. What'd she get, the other fella? No. Uh, <laughs> you get a hundred... Uh, she gets a hundred and two dollars. hundred and two dollars. Because you've got a more... Yeah, you've got a more interesting figure than either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of you and to the winner. We'll see you again next week, huh? Thank you. Out of it, Ed. Sam Bear and Irene Marshall are on deck now. So, folks, you in plays and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. Sam Bear and Irene Marshall. Huh? Now, which one is Bear? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's you. You can't be Bear. You're fully dressed. I decided we'd get that joke out of the way quickly. And we can get on to the regular show. Now, what kind of a name is Bear? Is that animal, vegetable, or mineral? Indian. You're an Indian? 32nd part Indian. Oh. Now, if you're only one thirty-second uh, Indian, uh, how do you know you're an Indian at all? Well, I was 24 before I uh, knew that I had any Indian blood. I was 24 before I found out a chicken had anything but a wing. <laughs> That's an old audible joke that never gets a laugh. <laughs> you like it? Now, Sam, do you have any of the Indian's characteristics? I mean, do you ever have an uncontrollable urge to drink firewater and kill all the people who make westerns? <laughs> Uh, I walk pigeon tall. My children walk slightly pigeon tall. In fact, the whole family does. Oh, really? Well, I have a friend who walks pigeon tall, and he isn't I an like, Indian. He's I like pigeon. birds and animals. <laughs> uh, now, what kind of a job do you have, Sam? I cut out silhouettes. You do? Uh, you cut out cigarettes, so I think you're very smart. Uh, uh, I, I tried cut cutting out cigars once, <laughs> but it didn't work. What's cutting out cigarettes got to do with your job? Well, I cut out silhouettes. Not cigarettes. Oh, silhouettes. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Well, how, how do you make a living cutting out silhouettes? Oh, by being good enough so that the people like them. Uh, and they buy these from you? Mm-hmm. You're Irene Marshall, huh? That's right. Yeah, well, you're a very pretty girl, Irene. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, where are you from, Irene? San Francisco. Well, which do you like better? Do you prefer San Francisco or do you like uh, Los Angeles? Mm, I prefer San Francisco. Uh -huh. Well, why don't you live there if you like it better? <laughs> Somebody out there was run over by a trolley car. <laughs> uh, 
uh, my family prefers Los Angeles. Your family lives here and you live in Frisco, huh? Mm, well, no, we live together mm. here. How big is your family? Well, I have one little girl uh, and uh, a parakeet, two cats, 17 turtles, a dog, and four alligators. <laughs> Four alligators and 17 titles, and this is your family? Certainly. Be interesting to see what our husband looks like. Huh? <laughs> is your husband in the audience, Irene, or, or is he in a zoo someplace? Uh, I'd like to meet him, throw him a few peanuts or something. <laughs> He might be there. I don't know. We're separated. Oh, you're separated? Well, you are if he's in the audience and you're here. <laughs> no, we are permanently Well, separated. I can't understand why you're separated. A girl with 17 titles and four alligators. Have you got names for these uh, gators? Oh, certainly. There's uh, Albert, Aloysius, Anatole, and Alphonse. Why did you name them all with A? Did you want them in the front part of the telephone book? <laughs> names appeal to me and they start with a like alligator oh, I see those are all boys names aren't they those names how do you know if an alligator is a boy or a girl well I you don't think this concerns anybody except another alligator <laughs> certainly a logical answer. I, uh, I can't argue with that. Uh, where do you keep these lovable monsters? In the bathtub. In the bathtub? You must take an awful lot of showers. Uh, where is your husband now? He took off for parts unknown. Uh, he's no fool, this guy. Uh. What sort of work do you do, uh, Irene? I'm a legal secretary. A legal secretary? Well, I'm looking for an illegal one, if you know. <laughs> if you know any, we could do some business. Would you like to take uh, another whack at marriage? Oh, definitely. What sort of fellow uh, would you like to marry? Somebody who's crazy about uh, uh, titles and alligators? Well, uh, I mean, uh, not necessarily, but uh, he must take me as I am. Uh -huh. And also he must go to work and keep his mouth shut. You want a man who will work, keep his mouth shut, and take a bath with four alligators? <laughs> well, I must say you've narrowed down, uh, narrowed down the field quite a bit, uh, Irene. <laughs> Apparently you don't believe in romance at all, huh? Well, this business of uh, opposites attracting is a lot of baloney, Groucho. A lot of baloney, huh? People should marry somebody just as ugly as they are. Uh, because the community of interest is very important and they should marry somebody just as energetic or just as lazy as they are and then they can either work themselves to an early grave digging ditches you know or if they're lazy they, uh, they're both lazy they can lie around in the sun like a couple of alligators and starve to death and, and come to the miserable end uh, that way. <laughs> well it's one of the prettiest descriptions of marriage that I've ever heard. <laughs> If you ever quit that law office, there's a great job waiting for you as an embalmer at some undertaking. <laughs> You're a most unusual couple, and it's been quite an experience talking to you, Irene. Now, let's see how much money you can earn. George, we have a man back here who's coming out here. To... This is Mr. Fenneman. This is Irene. You understand how this the, uh, is $100, game this is 200 and this is 3 And if you get a total of 500 you get a chance at the big money later. You have four questions to get a total of $500. But you got to get $500. You got to get five. Mm. Total. The uh, 300 are more difficult than the two, and the two are more difficult than the one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the uh, more difficult ones are the easiest. Sometimes. Spoken like a true redskin. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your, what happened to your husband? You never did tell us. Well, it was just one of those things. Uh, uh, it got a little bit too crowded, and uh, yeah. uh, it was a question of el elimination and survival of the fittest. Oh. <laughs> Didn't you let one crocodile go and keep your husband? <laughs> <laughs> you selected world geography. Oh, that's right. All right, this is the first one for $100. Huh? The island of Malta is located in what body of water? On the Mediterranean. Mediterranean is right. You now have $100. Three more questions to make 500 
Take one, Sam. There we go. Sam, has anybody ever come up to you and go, <laughs> No. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. They've got to go and buy, though. Oh. For two hundred dollars, to what country do the Bahama or Bahama Islands belong? Bahama. Right. Yes, we have no Bahamas. Huh? <laughs> Come on, kid. Uh, Great Britain. Great Britain is right. Oh, you... this kid is no fool. Eh? Now have three hundred dollars and two more chances to make five. Which, yeah. which one do you want to select? A hundred dollar one. This will give you a total of four hundred. In what country, for one hundred dollars, is Antwerp? Belgium. Belgium is right. But in the future, talk it over before you answer, because she might have said uh, Africa. <laughs> you uh, now have four hundred dollars, one more chance to make five. You still got to get another hundred dollars. For two hundred dollars. What is the largest city in Africa? Uh, Cape Town. No, I'm sorry, it's Cairo. Oh. Well, you wind up with $400, which of course you get to keep, but that does not qualify you for coming back and trying for the $10,000. Well, at least you're leaving, you're leaving here with more money than you came in, and that's not too bad. Thanks for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you, Roger. And now, George, we have the wheel here. Let's see if anybody's going to win $10,000. Well, Groucho, uh, Susie Gall and uh, Elfie Hummel earned $800 in the quiz, so here they are back again. Right in here, girls. Uh, <laughs> right here. Uh, here you are, boys. Uh, for the big money, girls. <laughs> well, congratulations. You know, this year, everybody who wins at least 500 in the quiz gets a chance at the wheel. Uh, and if you miss the big question, you still get to keep everything you've earned so far. Is that clear? Pick a number first. First, guess on the, yeah. Uh, one, a number from one to ten. Just say it out Five. loud. Five. Five. That's for ten thousand dollars. Now you pick a number for five thousand dollars. Eight. Eight. Now if any other number comes up, the question is worth a total of two thousand dollars. Now whatever you win is your total for the night, okay? Now one of you spin the wheel. Oh, what? Just turn it. Close. Well, anyway, this question is worth uh, two thousand dollars. A total of two thousand dollars. How much have you got so far? Eight hundred. Yeah, eight hundred. You don't have to walk anymore, you kids. You can ride. Now. Oh, that's wonderful. All right, for two thousand dollars, one of the most famous ballerinas of all time was the creator of the Dying Swan Ballet. For two thousand dollars, who was this great dancer? Legendary name. <laughs> Who is it? Ulanova? No, you're close, but it's Pavlova. Oh, Anna Pavlova, probably the sorry. most famous ballet dancer of all time. I'm sorry you missed it, but you wind up with $800, and that isn't too bad. Uh, Thanks, boys, <laughs> for being on the show. Thank you very much. And I'll anyway, see you in the saloon you. later. Huh? Okay. And no matter which of our products you buy, tell them Groucho sent you.